Man, I am so excited today. It is competition day. Well, not really competition, but a virtual competition. The State Cook-Off Association has been running these virtual competitions and I've been competing in them just for fun, right? Something to do on a weekend because we can't get out right now because of the COVID pandemic. But anyway, today is the hot dog competition. So in the South, a hot dog is not complete without a good chili. Chili mustard onions, kind of the standard hot dog in the South. But today we're going to use chili in a different way. Now I'm not here to share the whole virtual competition with you. I'm here to share the best hot dog chili recipe that you will ever put on a dog. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Smoke It, Grill It, Cook It. All right, so we're right in the middle of sauteing some ground beef here. Now you want to use a little bit of a leaner ground beef in this because you're not going to drain it. You want a little bit of fat there. So I'm using, actually it's a home homemade blend, right? Uh, it's probably about a 90-10. I use some brisket, some chuck, and some sirloin um, to make my own. I'm breaking this up into little pieces with my spatula, but here's the trick. I want you to take a potato masher and I want you to break this up into even smaller pieces. That's the key to a good hot dog chili is you want some really fine pieces of ground beef. It's, you don't have to mash it. You know, you just want to take this and kind of twist it around a little bit. You want to break these up into little pieces. So this potato masher is a perfect element to do that. Whoops, almost got some, almost got some spillage there, but I didn't. I'm using just a small little electric frying pan here. And I'm going to take this to competitions with me for some ancillary um, activities. But uh, so you can see, you can see how kind of fine ground this has become. It's about ready. You don't want to overcook it. I'm going to let that set. I'm going to take my spatula and just kind of move it around to make sure I don't see any huge pieces. If I do, I'm just going to kind of chop them up like that. Now, what I like to do is I like to put in my spices first. So, only five spices on this one. I've got two and a half teaspoons of chili powder, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of white sugar, and half a teaspoon of onion powder. So I'm gonna just add that directly to my dish there. And I'm gonna kind of stir that around. It's so cool, as soon as you put that in, you've got a, a blast of a, of a fantastic aroma that, you know, you, again, you, I'm gonna hold my face over the pot here, kind of get a ground beef so, uh, facial here. I just want to blend that in a little bit just to get some flavoring on the meat before I liquefy it to make our chili. This is a really easy recipe, but I'm telling you, it is fantastic on a hot dog. So that looks about right. Now I'm going to add about half a can of tomato sauce. It calls for 10 ounces. So it's a little more than half can. Usually cans are 15 and a half ounces, 15 ounces. So it's about maybe two thirds of a can. You can measure out 10 ounces if you want. You don't have to be exact. I've got half a cup of ketchup. The ketchup is gonna add some vinegar and sugar to set it apart from the tomato sauce. This is just a third a cup of water. Good old Johnson City tap water. And that's a splash of Worcestershire sauce. You don't want to put too much in because the Worcestershire will overpower this very quickly. So, you want to stir this around, make sure it's well incorporated, and you want to kind of bring it up to a simmer. You can already see that it's on a simmer. I've only got this thing on like a medium low heat, but it's already got some good temperature to it. That's why I kind of like cooking with these little electric skillets when I do. So you want to stir that around, make sure it's well incorporated, and then you want to sit, let it sit for just a few minutes to simmer. 
I still see a few larger chunks, so I'm just going to kind of chop those up a little bit because I want really fine chili. The more you chop it up like this, the better your chili is going to be. See how it's kind of simmering there? I'm going to turn it down even just a little bit more. I don't want it to boil. I just kind of want it to get all lovely together in this little hot tub. So it kind of says, hey chili powder, I'm onion powder. Nice to meet you. There we go. So this is going to sit here and just kind of marry to itself for about 20 minutes, maybe 15. You can see how it's still kind of popping, right? But not, not like a rapid boil. I just want it to pop a little bit, a little simmer action. Say hello. Nice to meet you, my friend. Worcestershire, where have you been all my life? Sorry, I'm giddy for the, for the competition. All right, I'm going to be back in about 20 minutes, and we're going to see how this turned out. Right, so the chili is looking fantastic. Cannot wait. Now, the reason that you kind of simmer it lowly, you want some of the moisture to cook off. You don't want a runny chili. Now, you don't want it like paste, but you don't want it runny. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna eat a hot dog because I'm gonna eat like probably five of them today. I'm just gonna take a little piece of hot dog bun just so I can taste it for you guys. A little piece of meat there. Blow it off. Mmm. I love it. Now, if you want it a little bit spicier, just put a little pinch of cayenne in there, maybe some red pepper flakes. That'll kick up the heat a little bit. One of the best hot dogs that I've ever eaten, this is going to sound weird, was on a golf course here in Johnson City during a tournament. There was a hot dog stand set up. And this guy was making honey hot dogs, like honey hot dogs. He took a spicy chili, poured it on top of, well first he took his bun, I'll use my hat bun here, took his bun, drizzled some honey on the bun, put his hot dog on, put his chili on top of that, and then what if you wanted mustard, onion, all that kind of stuff. But the chili was a little bit spicy. So that when you took a bite, your mouth kind of said, Wait a minute, this is really hot. Oh, no, wait a minute, what's that sweetness on the back? Oh, man, this is like a party in my mouth. Some of the best hot dogs that I've ever eaten. Now, they say the trifecta of hot dogs is eating Pink's in Hollywood, Nathan's in Coney Island, and the Varsity in Atlanta. I highly recommend putting on your bucket list to visit all three of them. It's kind of a wide variety of different hot dogs. I have completed the trifecta. I wish they gave like a trophy or a t-shirt or something, but I have completed the trifecta. I'll have to say I'm a very traditional hot dog guy. I like the Varsity the best. The Coney Island dogs are very traditional. And then Pink's, you can get anything you want on a hot dog out there, wrapped in bacon with avocado and tomato and ramen and everything else you want on a hot dog or don't want on a hot dog, it's at Pink's. Anyway, chili's done. Time to get ready for the competition. I'll see you next time on Smoke It, Grill It, and Cook It.